And also you can email us if you need, if you have issues, if you need somebody to pray with you, mm -hmm. if you need somebody to help you get through a certain illness, you can email us so someone will get in touch with you. Amen, amen. If you need Bible studies as well. Amen. We provide those services. Our objectives are to meet your needs and to, <laughs> and to provide support. And speaking of support, we are trying to put together a cancer support group. As soon as that is up, we will let you know about it. Uh, also, our second objective is to draw sin sick men and women to the man of Calvary, Jesus Christ, and to provide health suggestions for educational purposes only. We are not here to replace the advice of your physician or any healthcare providers that you may have. We are just providing health suggestions for educational purposes only. Amen, amen. So now can you share a little bit about our special guest this evening? I will stop sharing at this time. Okay, so before I do that, mm -hmm. this is Alzheimer's month, the month of November. We celebrate, we bring awareness to Alzheimer's month of um, for the month of November. And so November is almost finished, but we still in the nick of time caught it. This is our last Sabbath in November. So we're going to make our program geared towards discussing Alzheimer's today. Uh, so our special guest is Dawn Jenkins. She is joining us all the way from Washington State, not um, Washington DC, but Washington State. So that's all the way in the, what is that, the West? Yeah. So she's our presenter for today. Mm -hmm. She is, a, she was a physical therapist uh, by, by profession, but she left her job 21 years ago to do this kind of work. Isn't that amazing, guys? Yeah, Working yeah. for Jesus. And she um, she did so because she came into the knowledge of what we come here to do every week. She got trained as a medical missionary and she was trained by the meat ministry and she became a medical missionary. Then she answered the call to become a full-time missionary. And that was a whole 21 years ago. So her aim is to arm those who desire to find maladies in the um, relief of maladies in the body, mind, and spirit, so they can receive critical information to make good choices for themselves and for their families. She has a self supporting ministry. The name of it is uh, Restore. And she's involved in doing consultations, presentations, seminars, and uh, hands-on healing, and a whole bunch of other services she provides. So she has left her busy schedule to be here with us this evening. Welcome, Ms. Dawn. Amen. And um, before Sister Dawn comes in, I want you to put in the chat where you are uh, Zooming us from. If you are from the same state, uh, Sister Dawn, you can put it in the chat. And if you know somebody in Sister Dawn State, I want you to send them this link. If you're from the Caribbean, if you're in uh, Trinidad, I want you, you have many friends in Trinidad, I want you to share the link in Trinidad. If you're in England, I want you to share the link in England. I had, we had someone Wednesday from South Africa. I think she might be sleeping at this moment. But if you know somebody in South Africa, Guyana, I want, you should know about, about at least 20 individuals in Guyana. Um, Sister Cheryl, please share that link. Sister Merlin, I know your neighbors. You have about five or six neighbors around you. I want you to send them that link. 
So we have up New, New York State, we have uh, Syracuse, we have Guyana, just those two individuals. Everyone lives in New York, everyone else lives in New York. I'm sure share it in the chat where you are Zooming us from. Go ahead, uh, Sister Dawn. Uh, before, uh, before Sister um, Dawn starts, I just wanted to say that we are committed to raising awareness to the different diseases. And we felt like this was necessary because of all the things that Alzheimer's does to us. And what, 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 why, are we, why are we interested in this topic? Anybody can tell us, put it in the chat, please. Are you asking us or are you asking the chat if let me talk? Anybody, I'm asking. <laughs> well, remember the brain is a control center of the body and the brain stop work, everything else will eventually stop work or they put you on machine. And so it's important to take care of that. Uh, they call it the command center. It's good to take care of the command center. I see Sister Merlin says the brain is where we communicate with uh, our, our God, um, because a lot of people are suffering from this problem. Uh, and so it's important. Go ahead, Sister Donna. Okay, so um, before Sister, um, she, she starts, Dr. Ephraim, she has a little bit of information to make it even more real. And I thank those who have put in the chat why we are addressing this topic. Somebody said that um, it's because a lot of people have it. Somebody said it's because it's the command center of our bodies. So um, Dr. Ephraim. Yes, sister. Uh, you know, it is the sixth leading cause of death in the US and recent estimates call it the third leading cause because more than 16 million Americans are really suffering with dementia and Alzheimer's. So it kills more people than even breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. Wow. Very good. Anything else, Dr. Ephraim? Before this yes. answer? Also in 2021, Alzheimer's cost the nation $355 billion. And by 5050, they're estimating that it will be at least $1.1 trillion. In the US, we have 5.8 million people that are living with Alzheimer's. And by 5050, the number is projected to be more than 14 million. So every 65 seconds, someone in the US develops this disease. Wow, astounding. So people, this is why we are going to talk about Alzheimer's today. Okay, Mr. Don? I have a question for those that are on the um, platform, you know, those who are joining us. By a raise of virtual hands, how many of you have maybe a family member or know someone close to who has a parent or someone who's dealing with Alzheimer's or who is diagnosed with it by virtual ways of hand, just to kind of gauge our audience today. Last Alzheimer's or lost a family member to Alzheimer's or know someone close to you who is dealing with it in their family. I'll, I'll raise my actual hand since you can see me. But <laughs> yes, I see you, Donnelly. Yes, who else? I see some hands being raised in the chat. Right, yeah. We yeah, can let them share their experiences also if someone would like to share. So you might have to raise two hands because you already have one hand up. <laughs> so you might have to raise two hands. So let's, let's pick a brave soul. Who's who's the brave one who wants to mute themselves and just share quickly who who and who do you know is dealing with Alzheimer's right now? Can they unmute themselves? Yes, yes. Okay, I see Bonnie. Bonnie, you're unmuted. Go ahead and share. Uh, yeah, my mom passed uh, five years ago, and she had Alzheimer's. Mm. Wow, we're so, so sorry, sorry about that. Real loss, Bonnie. Thank you. 
thanks for sharing. And we're glad that you're here so that we can get some information, right? And be informed. Anyone well, else? Um, my, my grandmother right now, she's like 92 years old, but she is living with Alzheimer's as well. And uh, it's sad to watch when you remember who they were and who they become. So that's kind of like the heartbreaking part. And it kind of runs in my family. So me, especially, I have to be very, very careful with what I do. You, you know, that's a great point that you brought out, Sister Donnelly, because a lot of times we have, uh, we have illnesses that run in our family. And a lot of times conventional medicine will say, oh, it's in your DNA, it's just in your DNA. So it's like, you feel like you are prone to getting it. But because we share the same lifestyle, right? The same eating, cooking habits, certain habits that we have formed over the years that um, our family members have handed down to us, right? That we end up suffering from the same diseases. But just because um, your family members have this disease, it doesn't mean that you have to have it. So there is a way to prevent, you know, we can prevent these things, right? We have to first educate and inform ourselves, recognize the issues, the things that we may need to change or adjust in our lives so that way we won't have to suffer needlessly. Amen? Amen. And as I always say, genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. So are we guys ready for our speaker now? Yes, we are. All right. Sister Dawn, please go ahead. I just sent a message to unmute. Sister Dawn, you can go ahead and unmute, unmute yourself. Can you right. hear me? Good, yes. Yes, really quickly, what time am I to end? We have, um, uh, uh, what time is it now? It's um, 5.19, we have until 6, 6.20, somewhere around here, leave for questions and answers, 6.20. I'm sorry, did you say 620? Yes, it's 519 at the time here. It's 19 after five here. And so 6, okay. 620, you can finish. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, we have a lot to speak about uh, today. Um, some of this may shock you, uh, others may uh, not. Uh, but I'm going to tell you first and foremost, if you are um, not religious, uh, if you're atheistic, if you're new age, if you have Zoroastrianism, whatever it may be that you have, gather the roses and leave the thorns because this is life and death information. Um, <clears throat> don't, don't worry about the things that uh, I may say that uh, will lead towards the Bible. Just know this information is important. Uh, for those of us who are of uh, the Christian faith, just want to let you know that there is um, all of these answers were always here in the word of God. We will see that. But beyond that, uh, I cannot separate uh, the health message from the one who made these bodies and created this earth as far as I'm concerned. But know that whoever is listening, this information will be uh, rich in solutions. And there is hope for us in Christ. So let's pray and begin. All right, Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you so much for these precious ones who, as I'm listening, are quite informed of what's going on. I pray today that as we delve into these things and as we look at the solutions, uh, that we will rejoice to find out that there are things indeed uh, that can be done. And we may speak of them, but many times as we think about these diseases, we, we, we kind of... Uh, uh, dagger in faith because we see how our loved ones sometimes are not helped but we're going to ask lord even now that you would increase our faith because there is much hope in what we can do simple things to turn this thing around so thank you for the hope and we thank you that uh you will come now because if any man lack, lacks wisdom we could ask it of you and you would give it to us so i ask wisdom according to the promise in jesus name amen all right so, all right, Alzheimer's. Some people call it old timers. 
but it is Alzheimer's, and we are grateful to be able to speak about that today. Uh, there is overwhelmingly dismal news when it comes to Alzheimer's, okay? Uh, and it's a sad thing. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to talk to you a lot from a book called The End of Alzheimer's by uh, Dr. Bredesen. And if you have not heard of him, you might want to, con you might want to consider looking at it. Uh, a lot of information here and a lot of hopeful information. This information. Uh, he is an evolutionist, and he has done a lot of work concerning these things. And so we're going to see that we, we had this news a long time ago, uh, but... We are grateful that science is, is, is now coming up to the understanding, so praise the Lord. So very dismal news. There is not one drug that helps uh, to date that I know of um, and to date that this MD knows of. There is not one drug. Now, uh, does it mean that they don't uh, try, try over and over again to make things that help? Yes, they do. And so we're thankful for the bright minds that are trying to come up with some form of drug to help. But as far as we know today, it is a, a terrible, it's terrible news. There's not something conventionally that even really slows the situation down, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is the only disease, speaking of Alzheimer's, in the nation's top 10 most common diseases that there is no effective treatment for. That's what they say. Now, that, that, that's interesting. Now, Alzheimer's is really worse than fatal because you can die of a thing, but if you have your mind, you have who you are, you have your person, right? But when it comes to Alzheimer's and you forget, you forget who you are, you lose everything. Paranoia, all kinds of things begin to happen. Now, I'm going to do a sidestep really quickly here and then try to come back. I digress sometimes and you can come on and tell me, Dawn, stop digressing. There was a dear man <clears throat> who, uh, uh, by the name of Darwin Whitman, I believe was his name, and he spoke about the fact that he owned an old, uh, a convalescent home and he would help people. And he, he was a Christian and the, the, the children would come and the children would say, man, you know, we're so sorry because Mom and dad never used to act like this. They, they never cursed. They never screamed. They never, we don't understand why this is happening. Why did they change so much? And so on and so forth. And for those of us who are faith-minded, this is going to, may shock you. Um, so he said, I know why. I know why they're this way. And I was with bated breath, like, well, you know, why? Why, why are they this way? And he said, what you are seeing is the repression of sin coming out. I thought, whoa, what, what, what? The repression of sin. So instead of necessarily giving our sins to God or the things that we struggle with, sometimes we suppress them, we bite our lip, and we try to will our way past. And it was interesting to hear that, that side of things with this, this man. He says this was a suppression. Anyway, we'll get to the point later, and for those who understand the sanctuary, we'll recognize that God is wanting to clean both conscious and subconscious mind. Anyhow, let's go back. I digress. So conventional thought, okay, conventional thought. When they tried to make these drugs uh, for um, uh, uh, Alzheimer's, they, had a, they have a particular paradigm that they believe. So they, they, they believe that amyloid plaques, this sticky substance that connects to the synapses and different parts of the brain that it just kind of destroys uh, uh, the situation so that you are forgetting. They, they believe that this was the problem, the amyloid, the beta amyloid plaque. So uh, they tried to make drugs that would diminish that. Well, those drugs actually did do their work. As they did this work, uh, they were finding out that it didn't help. Now, isn't that interesting? So, uh, Sister Dawn, in fact, yeah, not only, yeah. Sister Dawn, pin there, you said plaque. What is this? Is this plaque that you're talking about? What the is amyloid, the, so the plaques are formed as a result of the amyloid in the system. These are like a sticky, okay, so for instance, you know how you have um, stress? Yes. When you have stress, the blood vessels will constrict. When the blood vessels begin to constrict, minor, te minor tears can happen 
in the, in the blood vessels. The body might use the cholesterol to help to, to, um, to uh, heal that. And it will overshoot and that cholesterol, that sticky stuff, uh, uh, and sometimes fat, it begins to stick along the sides of the, the cardiovascular system, creating problems, right? Okay, the same type of plaque stickiness from the amyloid will come, uh, production from amyloid will stick along by the synapses of the brain, as far as I understand it. Does that help you to understand? That's from um, the byproducts of the amyloid. It's the okay. amyloid plaques that the body uses. I'm going to get into that a little more as okay. to why they're even there. Okay. okay? All right. Be All right. Uh, be before I go ahead, Sister Dawn, yeah. no, this information that Sister Dawn is sharing, we are 93. And so you have received the link that we put in the chat. Can you pass it on to someone that will be benefit from this information? We have not started charging anything. So take it while it is free. So all you have to do is pass it on. Go ahead, Sister Dawn, sorry about that. No problem. Okay, so, so, so as these plaques, okay, so the, the beta amyloid plaques, so they would take this plaque uh, that make drugs to try and, and stop these uh, plaques from, from uh, being uh, in, in the way. What happened was they thought, well, immediately that should, that should take care of the problem, but they found out that the patients would, would not get any better or worse yet, would get terribly worse. And so they scratched in their head, like, what, 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 what's happening here? And so they would try the different trials costing upwards of 50 million each, uh, according to the trials here. Anyway, so they tried. So I'm just giving you a little background as to why they're finding out that these, these, this, this thought process may not be the way uh, the disease is actually being formed, okay? Uh, by the way, they have seen people in their 90s. Uh, they cut open their brain. They had perfect memory. As well, we say perfect. Let's say as about as good as you're going to get at this, uh, 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 in this world. Uh, but uh, their, their minds were sharp in their 90s. And so these nonagenarians, these, they, 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 they showed that when they opened their brain, they had a lot of amyloid and amyloid plaques, but the plaques were not destroying the synapses. Hmm, very interesting. So they were trying to figure out, well, what in the world? How, if they have these things, then how is it that they are still sharp? So we're going to find out some things about disease today that you may, it may change your mind about some of the things. The body is made under law, okay? The body is intelligent. It knows what to do. And when we say the body doesn't know what to do, uh, we, we get ourselves in trouble and we may, we may go after what actually helps the body and hurt the body in results of our misguided um, uh, scientific uh, approaches. So what am I saying? I'm saying that God is smart. He made the body well. The body is able to resilient. And for those of us who believe in the word of God, we know that in Psalm 103, 1 through 5, we find many answers. We'll get there shortly. Okay. Okay. So just a background as to why some of these, these drugs were not working, um, because they had a hypothesis of one thing, and when they tried to get rid of it, they found it didn't make a change or it, they got the, the people got even worse. Okay, so we say uh, when you have a burn or you get a strain or a sprain, we can overcome it. But how is it that we cannot overcome struggles with the brain? Why is the body able to help the strain, the, the burn, the sprain, but not able to help the brain in this particular matter? Well, I believe it can. Now, um, there are many different, let me just quickly go into some of the housekeeping here. So types of Alzheimer's, let's look at this. There are several types of dementia, I should say. Uh, let's look at it. So there's uh, vascular dementia that's formed uh, by reduced blood flow uh, to, the, um, to the brain. Um, and uh, we, we can get into that a little bit, but that's, uh, that could be caused by many different things. Uh, but uh, then there's frontotemporal dementia. This is uh, much less common uh, than Alzheimer's and is often, uh, it, it features changes in behavior, memory problems, and difficulty speaking. 
Uh, there's Lewy body dementia. I had never heard of this. <laughs> this is a fairly common cause of dementia, it says. About one in, in a patient in every five uh, Alzheimer's uh, patients. Uh, anyhow, this one, you get visual hallucinations, delusions, increased sleeping, um, flinging of your limbs. Isn't that interesting? Restless, almost like a restless leg syndrome, but restless limbs in, in a sense. And that's Lewy body dementia. And then there's Alzheimer's disease. And by the way, Alzheimer's disease accounts for about 80% of dementia. So it's the, it's the largest one that uh, I think we know of. There's also subjective cognitive impairment, which just means you, you start to notice, um, uh, you know, um, a little bit of change from the normal range, mild cognitive impairment about the same. Uh, you're still doing well, but you're noticing that you're forgetting names and some of those things. Okay. So there's a bunch of different types of dementia, but Alzheimer's is by far uh, the biggest one. All right. Uh, All right. Jean, so I'm going to. Sister yeah. John, there's a pin, pin right there. So there are you. The, we understand there are many type of Alzheimer's, but the, all of them have the same, same um, physiological type of dementia uh, condition. Then, if you want to say, all of them has the same uh, mark. Then, if but it might have too much of one thing. But basically, all of them is the same. Correct. Um, you have, well, you have different types of dementia, but uh -huh. Alzheimer's is one type of dementia. Okay. Mm -hmm. All so right, go ahead. Alzheimer's is about 80% of them, but there is really technically, I have to give you one other that you might want to consider, which is creutzfeldt yakoff disease, very con, uh, how, how would you say, um, it causes division. Anyway, uh, the creutzfeldt yakoff disease is oftentimes, there's only one way to, to know whether you have that, and that is by postmortem, which is normally not done. Uh, some would say that, uh, that there are a lot of those cases, that's a prion disease, uh, where the prions um, are causing uh, strange foldings. Anyway, uh, what's happening is because of eating um, uh, animals like cows and sheep and different things who have been fed in the wrong way, causing mad cow disease, that transfers to the human calling, uh, causing mad people's disease. And that's a, a spongiform disease, which is more like holes in the brain. Now that I did not bring into this, uh, but I thought I would mention that there is also creutzfeldt yakoff disease. And the only way to know is by postmortem. They don't tend to do that. So we could have some of that happening here as well, but you would not know. All right, so uh, just something to consider. No, Sister Joan, uh, uh, Sister Dawn, there is a hand that is okay. up. There is a hand that is up. And Kareen, uh, Kareen, I'm gonna unmute you. Um, what, what's your question? I don't have a question. I was just saying, let's hear the full presentation. Maybe we can have questions later, just so that we can get the flow mm -hmm. going. I'm, I'm getting a little uh, mm -hmm. kind of choppy. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Okay, should I go forward? Yes, go ahead, Sister Dawn. All right, so I want to talk about the first signs of mental decline. I'm going to say that again, the first sign of mental decline. Now, it's going to shock you. It's something called sarcopenia. Now, that's, that's an interesting word. It means puny muscles. So as your muscles begin to give way, guess what? you can know that you're gonna to begin to have some mental decline. That's interesting. Uh, I'm, gonna let you, I'm gonna let that sink, sink in a little bit. We have lost a love for fitness, okay? And our, our brains, our stomach, so our, a lot of these different, of sorry. Uh, am I to stop? I'm hearing something. That. Am I to keep going? Oh, okay. Not sure. I guess I'm just going to keep going until I hear otherwise. That, Dawn. Dawn, we're sorry about that. Someone wasn't muted, so there was some um, noise. But yes, you can you can keep. Oh, going. okay, okay. I'll keep going. The next sign of mental decline is, um, and it's, it's diabetes. It's very interesting. Now, 
<clears throat> there are several types of diabetes. I believe there are five. I don't know if there's more by now. But there's type one, type one and a half, type two, type three, and type four. Okay. Now, type three diabetes, let's, let's go to type one. We know that's insulin dependent because the pancreas is not producing or producing extremely low. The 1.5, the pancreas is producing, but very low. 0.2, it's not insulin dependent. I mean, not 0.2, diabetes type two. Uh, you are making it, but you, your, 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 your cells are not taking it in, okay? Type three is Alzheimer's. By the way, you should consider that now they're beginning to say that with um, uh, diabetes type two, it's now being called Alzheimer's of the pancreas. I'm gonna let that sit in a little bit, okay? Uh, so Alzheimer's is type three diabetes. Now, type four diabetes is gestational diabetes. Now that's, this is very interesting. So you're, going, you're getting an inkling as to why Alzheimer's is prevalent and you know what diabetes is dealing with and that's sugar. We'll get there soon enough. But anyhow, so, these are things that are going to begin to be precursors to the curse that is Alzheimer's, okay? Now, let me, this book is an interesting book, and I thought this was very interesting, uh, how he describes the perfect day to induce Alzheimer's. So listen carefully. I'm only going to pick up the day at the uh, middle to the end of the day because it's too long for me to get into all that before I get into the rest of what we need to get into as far as solutions. So, so I'm gonna pick up the day. This he's a pretty interesting writer here, and he says, uh, you 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 get to the point where you've worked so hard and you deserve a treat. So I'm gonna pick it up there. To that luscious frappuccino we've been keeping in the fridge. Sugar and fat runs, I'm sorry, sugar and fat runs have been the only exercise we've had today. But who has time to get up and move around frequently? Finally, it's time to hit the freeway, heading home while screaming at the person in front of you, riding his brakes in front of you, thus keeping the blood pressure up and making our blood-brain barrier as porous as the colander we plan to use for tonight's gluten-filled pasta dinner. On second thought, let's get something from the drive through Start with large fries, a perfect source of Alzheimer's-inducing advanced glycation end products or trans fats starchy insulin, oxidized reheated oils with a little vitamin E, and of course, neurotoxic acrylamide. You can almost picture each fry with the tiny little boxing gloves snarling, let me get at that hippocampus. Add the burger from corn, not grass-fed beef, high in inflammatory omega-6 fats, and low in the anti-inflammatory omega-3s, slathered in high fructose corn syrupy ketchup on a bun so packed with gluten, it's the perfect way to punch holes in your intestinal lining and your blood brain barrier. Home again, ignore the moldy smell, collapse in front of your favorite TV uh, screen, sorry, for some Netflix binging and or other favorite fare. As long as it doesn't offer mental or physical uh, stimulation. Uh, leave the white, what is this? Uh, we tennis and soccer to the children. Then we, can, then we can top off the perfect Alzheimer's inducing day with a relaxing margarita or three to accompany the amaretto cheesecake. Then dutifully pretend to get caught up on work before drifting off to sleep with the lights on and the electronics still blaring. Rinse and repeat. This is the end of a perfect Alzheimer inducing day. All right, I say this because I'm giving you an inkling as to how we get Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's disease happens when the brain tries to protect itself from three metabolic and toxic threats. Let me repeat that. Alzheimer's disease happens when br the brain tries to protect itself from three metabolic and toxic threats. So what are those? The first one, inflammation, just in case you're writing. The first threat, inflammation. The second threat, 
the decline or shortage of nutrients, hormones, and brain supporting molecules. I will repeat that. The second one, the decline or shortage of nutrients, hormones, and brain supportive molecules. Okay. The third, toxins slash poisons. Okay. So inflammation, decline in nutrients, hormone, excuse me, hormones, brain supportive molecules, and the third one, toxins and poisons. And we're going to go in depth into each one. Okay. So, so, so don't worry, start writing. We have much to talk about. It is necessary then to remove the factors that are causing our brain to defend itself from these threats. These amyloids are made when the brain is trying to defend itself. Is amyloid the problem is the question. Well, when they took it out of the way, no one got better. So we have to ask the question. The body is made under law. The brain knows how to help itself. The problem is when we keep putting the fuel on the fire and we don't uh, uh, stop putting the fuel on the fire and we keep uh, taking something to, 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 to put out the fire, we have made a mistake. If you have to mop up the floor and you don't turn off the tap or stop the leak, this is a problem, right? This is a problem. So we have to find out what is the fuel that's on the fire. So let's look at inflammation, the first one. The body, the brain is saying, okay, I'm making amyloid because I'm trying to help myself. The amyloid is overdone just the same way as in stress with the heart uh, or with the fat, uh, the way the, the, the heart tries to, the vascular system tries to heal itself with cholesterol. All these things that we're looking at, the body is smart. It knows what it wants to do, but we have failed many times in learning how to do this. So let's look at this. Inflammation, your body's, inflammation is your body's response to attack. Okay, it's your body's response to attack. So let's look at this. All right, so let's look at this. What attacks the body? Well, there's several things that attack the body. Let's just look at infections at first. So part of the way the body responds uh, to invading pathogens is by producing amyloid, the very substance that forms the brains, uh, the brain plaques that characterize Alzheimer's disease. Now that's interesting. All right. And like I said, when you when you look into, or no, I haven't said this yet, when you look into the brain of someone with Alzheimer's after they've done a, a of course a a, a post mortem or a, um, seeing what has happened after death, um, they find bact pathogens in the brain from bacteria from the mouth, molds from the nose. Viruses such as herpes from the lips, Borrelia or Lyme disease, those spirochetes from a tick bite, and on and on and on. And the body is trying to help itself. So inflammation comes as a result. Now that, that's very interesting, but when it goes overboard, and we'll find out what breaks the blood brain barrier, and these things may shock you terribly. If we can uh, try to get to them, boy, our time moves quickly. But anyhow, so, uh, so let's look at these, these pathogens. So as things come into our bodies, if we are not able to fight them, if we are not able to have the raw materials in the body, the body's going to fight them with inflammation, okay? So these are things to think about. So um, I wanna get into some of these infections in the mouth, but I'll go there later. Okay, so let's look quickly at non-infection triggers. That can, that can happen as well. So inflammation can be caused by pathogens, infectious diseases, but there's a non-infectious disease or let's say practice that can also trigger inflammation. And what is that? That is the eating of trans fat. What in the world is a trans fat? This, the trans fat is made by humans, okay? Hydrogenation, a process, a big long process. Um, the fact is, that what we're doing is we're, we're creating a, a fat that is man-made. What it does to the system is bad, okay? So if I was a trans fat and I was your um, blood vessel 
uh, and I'm eating the trans fat, what that fat does is it makes the, or tends to, to make the, the blood vessels very rigid, which means that when the heart is pumping against uh, and, 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 and the pressure of blood hits the wall, there's no flexibility or very little flexibility. Those little mini tears can begin to get into that, uh, the blood vessel and the body is going to what? Try to compensate by cholesterol in the system, right? To try and fix it. And that can keep going as, as we keep eating these trans fats. Well, that's not so good. Uh, trans fats, then you have polyunsaturated fat, you have omega-6s, 3s, all these different types of fats. But, and we'll get into the good fats, which are omega-3s. If you have omega-3, that makes the blood vessels very flexible. So when the blood hits the walls, it moves in respect and doesn't break apart. So wh where do we get these trans fats? Well, a long time ago, they replaced butter with margarine, okay? Or we decided to have a lot of the baked goods uh, from the 1950s on, and they would have um, these, these trans fats, some of the peanut butters. Uh, I don't like to name names. Uh, so a lot of these unnatural peanut butters will have hydrogenation in them, and these trans fats are a part of that. So what can we do? We can use the natural peanut butter, or we can go even better and do almond butter, okay? Um, and the natural almond butters, uh, peanut butter would be like Adam's peanut butter or um, Maranatha peanut butter, the organic being better. Okay, so trans fats, these margarines, these fake fats that are put into the pro uh, processed foods, uh, just an awful way to go um, for the system. And they clog the system. Okay, uh, we'll get into that. In your blood, in your, in your mind, in your brain, your blood, which you can fit a whole lot of blood into just the pin head, uh, when you have, there are some in the prefrontal cortex or in the front of your brain uh, where your reasoning is, uh, these capillaries, these, these blood vessels are so small that each blood, uh, each, each, each uh, blood um, cell has to squeeze through it. Can you imagine? that these fats clogging up the prefrontal cortex and the blood cannot get into these areas. It creates these little TIAs. Uh, the, these, are, these are little like micro um, cardiovascular incidents where the blood cannot uh, get to the tissue and it dies. Over time, that creates types of dementia, okay? All right, so these are things that we want to avoid. Eat real food, okay? And uh, we will talk about a way, well, let me do it now because we may not get to it. So one of the ways to unclog the system in the, with, the, with, the, with, the, uh, with the prefrontal cortex, there's a particular food. It is wonderful. It's called sunflower seed lecithin. Let me say that again. Sunflower seed lecithin, a wonderful unclogger of these, these, um, these different uh, uh, cholesterol and different things in these small uh, capillaries of the prefrontal cortex. Okay, very good. Let's keep moving because I want to talk wait, about- Wait I'll a minute, this, Sister Dawn. Dawn. Dawn, Sister Dawn, wait a minute. Where do we get this, um, this sunflower thing that you're talking about? Where do you get that? <laughs> I'm so glad you're interested. So sunflower seed lecithin, by the way, uh, it's creamy and delicious. Okay, um, you can get that on Amazon.com. You could get that at your local health uh, uh, store. I believe you have Whole Foods on the on the east. I don't know if you have New Seasons. I don't know if you have co-ops. Uh, but any self-respecting Whole Foods store will have sunflower seed lecithin. Now, um, soy lecithin can do a work. The problem with soy is that, it, that it is highly genetically modified, and we will go into that shortly as to how that is creating a problem uh, with inflammation as well. But sunflower seed lecithin is magnificent, okay? And, um, so, and, so, and so we, what do we do with it? We get it and uh, okay. do we just put it in our yes. mouth? Do we so, use so, things with it? Yes. What do we do with it? Oh my, let me tell you the things you can do. So what you can do with the sunflower seed lecithin, 
I like to make milk with it. So I will take a little bit of nut or if whatever nut you prefer. I like cashew nuts, high in magnesium, but cashew nuts. And all you need is a small amount because when you use the lecithin, it's an emulsant, which means that it's going to blend the water with the nuts. So it's going to be like the store-bought milk. It's wonderful. You take a tablespoon of that or a teaspoon to a tablespoon, depending on how thick you like it. You put that and you make your milk, a little bit of salt if you like the taste of salt. Some people like vanilla. I just make mine plain so I can put it into whatever I want, whether it's granola for my milk. That is, when I say medicine, not allopathic medicine, but this is a sweet blessing to the brain. If you want to make your milk a healing agent for Alzheimer's, uh, or for um, the TIAs that bring on dementia in general, this is a very nice recipe, okay? I even have a cheesecake, <laughs> for those who are interested, that will help with the brain capacity to heal. So there's a lot. We have a lot of information, but we have a lot to cover. So these things can be sent to you if you just get my email. I will send that some of those recipes to you that's already written down, okay? All right, let's keep moving if we can, if we have so much more to go go through. All right, let's see. Can I go yet or is there another question? Wait, wait, wait Sister Dawn. I see my, my okay. co-host Donna who invite you. I, she, has, she has a question or she has a comment. Go ahead, Sister Donna. No, I was, I was asking if just- eating. You're low, Sister Donna, you're low. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I was just asking if eating the sunflower seeds have the same effect or no. Okay, very good question. The sunflower seeds will have the fat because the sunflower seed lecithin is the fat of the sunflower seeds. All right, so you can eat sunflower seeds and make your milk or your salad dressing or whatever else from that. It will be a little slower since it's fractionated, but Technically, God knew what he was doing when he kept the whole food together. What we're doing is just oh, starting the healing. Okay, so let me tell you. See, I'm going to have to digress here. See, there's good, there's better, and there's best. The whole food will always be best. And I will get into that if I can get through this. I will be able to get to what I'm, I'm explaining afterwards. Right now, we're just trying to deal with the triggers. Okay? But the the um the whole foods will always be best god you cannot improve on god the fractional foods are only the boost to get you back to the way that you should be for instance juicing is third best smoothies are second best but eating is the best when you are sick and dying you may not be able to digest the food well so we give you the juice but we'd rather you get the fiber as well later as you are able. The juice will get the nutrition, nutrition into your cells within 20 minutes. The smoothie within two to three, four hours and eating the same. So this is, this is, this is good, better, best. This is just the, the jump start to get you back to where you should be, which is the whole food, the sunflower seed. Hopefully that answers and uh, hopefully we can uh, push forward here. Just, and just can, one more, Sister Dawn. Sorry, just one more. Um, in the chat, we have D. Lynn saying, isn't sunflower seed high in omega-6, which we get ample in our diet, which create an imbalance of omega-6 to three, sorry, to ratio, I believe, three ratio, which is inflammatory. Uh, that's, that's what they say in the chat. So they're saying that it's, it's an omega-6, but it's whole food, so it has the balance in it to, for it to be absorbed properly, properly. Properly is when you take it out of that environment and uh, uh, over, over abuse it. That's where we have issues with it. You can add to that? So um, just so you know that in nature, nature does the ratios perfectly. So... Um, we don't even have to worry about omega-6 versus 3 versus all these others if we're eating correctly. Um, what man has done is fractionated the food. So he pulls out the oil from the olive. He pulls out the lard from the, the milk, uh, not the milk, the uh, pig, 
uh, all these different things. And at, as a result of pulling uh, things away, we find the dysfunction. If you eat the sunflower seed, its ratios will be perfect. If you eat the flax seed, its ratios will be perfect. But if you eat things that are acidic or only have that, you're going to have an issue. And I think we will get to all of that. If you allow me to keep moving, I can be able to get to those types of things. And that way we can spend the time in question and answers afterwards. And that way we could, we could get to some of these, because some of these things that you need to hear about may be missed. Uh, if we don't get to them. Just just a caveat. I don't mind to answer, but just know you may miss some of these these things. We may not be able to get to them. Go ahead, Sister Dawn. All right. So now, um, so that's infections. Okay. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about, um, uh, where do I want to go? Okay. So where was I? I was dealing with the different infections that come as a result of, uh, so if you have had a, a um, uh, what is that called here now? The, not the crown, but the um, root canal, okay? A root canal is a tooth that is dead and the, the, the nerve has been taken out and supposedly it has been cleaned. The problem with this is that it's impossible to clean the tubules <clears throat> of the tooth. So, what, so if you look at a tooth, they are, there are microscopic hallways all through the tooth. And when you take away, when you have pain, the, the body is saying, you have an infection here. And what we do instead of dealing with that infection, sometimes we will scrape out the tooth. We will try to bleach it out. We'll try to clean it out. We'll put cement in the tooth. But the tooth is dead, okay? That's a, that's a root canal. And what happens is, though they put the cement in there, the little tubules, you cannot get the bacteria from out of the tubules. So if you test a tooth, it, it will always be 100%. You will still have those little, uh, little, 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 little critters that are not paying rent, and they are pooping or metabolizing, eating, eating and pooping, excreting, as it were. And that goes down into the bloodstream and that creates uh, that creates a particular type of low grade inflammation or a chronic inflammation because the body sees it and it has to fight. Okay. Now um, these are things that can be a problem. They go to the brain, they go to all manner of places. So if your mouth is, has got uh, gingivitis in another way, where you have, um, uh, you can get low grade infections as a result, and the body will continue to have um, a, a low grade inflammation happening. These are all things that can contribute to the problem. Okay, so I'm hoping you're beginning to see how important it is to keep the mouth clean. Now, at the end of this presentation, don't let me forget to talk about a powerful way to clean the mouth, okay? Um, that is very simple. Okay, so these are things that can be a problem. Uh, what else do I want to talk about here as far as infections? Um, all right, let's talk about sugar. Okay, let's talk. Oh, no, I got to do leaky gut real quick. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about leaky gut. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be a sensitive topic, okay, because there is a doctor named Dr. Tom O'Brien. And he is a functional uh, doctor. He's a doctor, I think, of, I don't know if it's a doctor of osteopathy. I don't know if he's DO or, anyway. He is a fella who, and for functional doctors, these people deal a lot with the stomach, the, the gut-brain connection, okay? And he spoke about, uh, in the lab test they would do for people, 100% of the people who came in who ate uh, gluten, gluten products, and I'm speaking of the type of gluten that's in the normal processed foods, and I'll get into what that means shortly. 100% of them, when they took it in, had um, uh, what we would call gut permeability as a result of this. Now, what does that mean, gut permeability? It means that there were slight little holes that it would trigger slight little holes in the gut, and that's your, that's your small intestine, okay? And the problem with that is that, and, and, and depending on your genetics and depending on um, how severe you are, 
it could trigger that permeability for one hour, three hours, and for some as long as 14 days to 90 days. Now, this is in a book called, um, uh, it's called The Fix, I think, The Autoimmune Solutions They're Not Telling You About. If you want to, want to hear some more of this information, it's, um, you can watch it on YouTube. It's called Betrayal, uh, The Autoimmune Solutions They're Not Telling You About. And it's very interesting information. So we need to deal with that leaky gut. Now, if we have leaky gut, leaky gut can be um, uh, caused by a number of things. One is the gluten, and I'll explain why, but another is genetically modified foods. Uh, let me talk, to, talk um, or address how gluten is able to do that. What's happening with gluten, okay, is that um, gluten, the, as we see it now, like your, your, your semolina, regular durum semolina that's in most processed foods, your pastas and things of this nature. What has happened is since 1945, they have hybridized it to such a level that there is 400 times the gliadin protein. This is the type of protein that is in the gluten that we cannot break down, but the yeast uh, that we used to make the bread with, you know, the yeast that we used to make would break that down for us because we used to make bread for seven hours. We would proof it for seven hours, let it raise that, that, that bacteria would help break down that bread. Well, it's been hybridized uh, to about uh, 400 times what it, what it used to have. So it's not the same thing our great grandparents ate since 1945. Okay, and so doing that to make it, you know, addictive, and we love, we love, we love our wheat bread. It, it's delicious. God gave us the chief of the wheat. By the way, the the original word there is spelt, so He gave us the spelt wheat. But we have taken this wheat and we've done some things to it. On top of that, what has happened with the wheat is that, well, we we use quick acting yeast now, right? So quick acting yeast. What does that mean? So in about an hour and a half, the bread is ready to, you know, it's rising and different things. But those little bugs are not breaking down this long chain because it doesn't have the time and because it's been highly hybridized, one. Number two, unfortunately, at this point, 120 of our fruits and vegetables, some would say 160, that's according to uh, Jeffrey Smith, um, uh, they have been, uh, they are using glyphosate or Roundup let's just say glyphosate, which is one of the, the, the um, ingredients uh, in our, uh, our Roundup, our, it says the weed killer. Um, they are using this in the, um, some say the drying process or even in the washing of the seeds before it's planted. Um, and glyphosate uh, is a chelator. What that does is it unfortunately will bind all of the nutrition to itself and take it out of the system. This is not good. And so you have these two together in the wheat that we are eating and it's causing, or, or they are linking, some are linking this because we can't say causation until, because no one's really wanting to do that research, but other independents are doing that. But anyhow, what's happening is that these two together create a terrible situation for the gut. And when the gut begins to have these, 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 these little holes, you eat something, the undigested proteins and sugar goes out into the bloodstream too quickly, the body says, oh, this is foreign, and it tries to fight it. So imagine this, every time you eat, the, bl the white blood cells are having to fight a war, it's like America going every direction, and, and, and your GIs are, 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 are overworn. Well, your white blood cells are being overworn because every time you eat now, you are, the, the, the food is going out into the bloodstream too quickly. The body is mounting a white blood cell attack. Wow. You can begin to understand chronic fatigue. You can begin to understand some of the things that are happening. And so you're always in inflammation mode. This gives rise to allergies. So now you see people allergic to this, allergic to that. They can't eat this peanut. They can't eat that nut. And you're going to see more and more of this because it's at epidemic levels now because the majority of millennials who have grown up with these processed foods have the leaky gut at an earlier age. And I, I get these calls again and again. Had a, a young person, uh, a person who called and uh, they were 13. They had, been, they had been suffering with belly pain for eight years. I want you to catch that, eight years. Okay, anyway, so these are the things that are happening. Okay. 
So looking then at, glu um, at, at the gluten problem uh, and just one exposure can, can, can open you to really bad troubles for up to three months. That is an issue. But I just eat it once in a while. But if you're sick and this is one of your problems, you're going to continue to have, a, um, to have the, the fuel on the fire and not know what's going on, okay? So something to consider. The next thing you want to, con and let me tell you where you, you get the, this gluten, these glutinous grains that are causing so much trouble. It's in the regular wheat. It's not so much in the organic wheat, okay? But if you've been eating or if you, you have now already gotten antibodies to this wheat, even though the wheat may be good wheat, the body may still reject it because it has at this point gotten so upset with it that even if you eat the good wheat or the good corn, whatever is causing the trouble, it can be an issue. So just for those who are having issues and they, they want to know if this could be an issue, uh, get rid of the wheat, wheat germ, rye, barley, bulgur, couscous, farina, graham flour, kamut matzo, semolina, spelt, and triticale, and I, I can give these to you later. I'm just saying these are the ways that you're going to find some of these different ones that could be causing a problem for you if wheat is a problem for you, okay? So, and I know that's a lot to take in. Uh, don't worry, we can get that to you, okay? Um, okay, the next thing I want to talk about are the, um, unfortunately, the, the genetically modified food. Now, should I describe what genetically modified food is or are you all quite aware or what should I do there? Okay. Explain um, it. I'm Somebody not, not know what it is, Dawn. Explain it. Okay. Go ahead and explain it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So genetically modified food, which there are about 15, 13 to 15 of them now. Genetically modified food is when you have, uh, what, uh, what they do is they will take, let's say a potato or let's do a tomato, all right? And they want to put a trait in the tomato. Maybe they want it to have longer shelf life, to be more red. They want to be whatever they might want to do. They might take a spider gene, okay? Now, I'm telling you this in supposition, but <laughs> if you look it up, I'm actually telling you what is being done. So anyhow, uh, you might want to search that out to see if it's so. Let's put it that way. So you take the spider gene or the fish gene, a, fish, a gene from a fish, and you mate it with a tomato gene. Now, in real life, does a tomato mate with a fish? Does a spider mate with a potato? No, right? That doesn't happen. So a, a, a spider and a, and a potato are not going to make a spato. It's not going to do that. All right, so what has to happen is they take a, a, a gun, a gene gun, as it were, add either a virus or so to it because a virus will go into DNA. And what they do is they transport the, the, the DNA material through the shot right into the potato gene or whatever gene they're doing and trying to mix it. It's not an exact science. And the, the collateral damage or the peripheral damage is unknown, but I'm, I'm going to tell you it's becoming known, all right? So anyway, they do this, and what they've created is no longer a tomato or a fish, but it still looks like a tomato. It's a brand new organism, maybe never seen before, okay? But what that's going to do is that's genetic now pollution. We don't even have time to get into what that's gonna look like, okay? But regardless, so, there are, so what they've done to the corn and this is particularly egregious, um, what they've done to the corn. And let me, let me just back up and tell you, I am not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. This is information that I have gleaned through the years. Check it out for yourself to see if, they are, if it is so, okay? I don't prescribe, I'm not FDA approved, I make no claims, okay? Uh, but I can tell you, beautiful things happen as you use God's way, okay? Now, I'm going back here. Um, where was I? Oh, yes, a uh, corn. So what they did to add to the corn, uh, they decided to put something called a BT toxin. It's a big, long name, Benzielis, or some, some, some long name that I don't have in front of me because I'm not giving a genetically modified lecture right now. Um, but what happens is that um, that corn has been uh, 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 made to withstand 
uh, any pesticides uh, that are being sprayed or soybeans are the same way, but the corn actually has its own pesticide within it. So every kernel of corn, if it's a genetically modified corn, has its own pesticide in it. So when the bug tries to eat the corn kernel, the bug's little belly splits open, according to Jeffrey Smith and some of these others. Uh, if you want to look up, um, uh, you want some of this information, you can look up genetic roulette, the gamble of our lives. Very excellent. It's called genetic roulette, the gamble of our lives. Okay. So really quickly, what happens is that the, um, the bugs eat it, their guts split open, and the bug dies. Well, we're just a little bigger, but our guts are splitting now. It's called leaky gut. And what happens is those genetically modified foods tend to destroy the good bacteria in the gut, and, and the bad bacteria is allowed to proliferate or become more. And we will see that when those little, little uh, bad, they're not bad bugs, but when they are allowed to be in the ascendancy, when they are allowed to proliferate, beyond what they should, they become terrible squatters. They're in there and they're not paying you any rent. And they're, they're going to the bathroom and they're eating all your sugar up. By the way, when you crave sugar, it's normally them asking you for the sugar. You eat it and they have lots of babies. Their babies have lots of babies, the more sugar you eat. And so they're squatting in there, not paying you any rent. And, and when they poop or when they metabolize, that poop goes against the, the intestines. When the intestines get that, your intestines are thin, one cell thick, that creates holes, another set of leaky gut, another way to get the leaky gut. When that happens, the body says, oh, no, 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 we, we can't do this. It creates a, a mucus to go around the, the, the intestines. Now, that's a problem because when the body's trying to save you from death, but what happens is that with that mucus, you don't get to absorb a lot of your nutrients. And you begin to see a wasting away. This is inflammation. This is, we've just gotten to the first one, which is inflammation. All right. So do you begin to see how there's a confluence of things that can begin to have problems with the brain? It's a confluence. It's not just one thing. It's not just amyloid. Why is it getting there? This is what we want to find out, right? So we want to help ourselves by cleaning the system of some of these things. There's something called SIBO or SIBO. I say SIBO, some others say SIBO. SIBO is small intestinal overgrowth, uh, bacterial overgrowth. So bacteria that should belong in the big colon is getting into the small colon. Now I'm going to show you a way that that can happen, that you're going to be like, what? Listen to this. There are people who take a long time to go to the bathroom. Hmm? Back in the back, uh, a long time ago, the TV programs and commercials would laugh about this. And you would go and you would hear the people sitting reading the newspaper while they're on the bathroom, right? Waiting to go to the bathroom. Why? Because it's called constipation. Well, guess what? When you sit on the toilet the wrong way, you can begin to have a problem. Let me explain. When you, there is a, a muscle that goes around the rectum, where the rectum and the anus are, to, to kind of strangle it, to stop things from coming out, which is a good idea, wouldn't you say? Because you don't want to walk down the street and, and have something happen, have an accident, do you? You want to be able to walk and have a pleasant time, talk with your friends. All right. Well, what happens is when you sit at a 90 degree angle, that I think it's called the pubis rectus, pubis, pubic, pubis, pubis rectus. It's been, it's been a while, but anyway, it goes around there. And what happens is that uh, at 95 degree angle, it's still holding back and um, and kind of strangulating, if you will. Not not that's not the best word, but 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 putting a restriction in that area. Well, guess what? What angle we sit at when we go to the toilet in the porcelain throne nowadays, and especially as we're older and we find we can't get up, we're sitting at a 90 degree angle. Worse yet at maybe even 45 degree angle in, in, in the opposite direction, right? Maybe 110 degrees. So what am I saying? What happens is when we squat, when our knees are higher than our pelvis, then that muscle relaxes and you deliver the full load. Have you ever gone to the bathroom and you felt you didn't deliver the whole load? Yes, you probably have. You probably didn't, right? So what happens is the, the anus and the rectum line up beautifully. And when you're, when you're allowing, so, so they used to make fun of the, the, the different 
uh, people who are poor who would squat to go to the bathroom. I'm from the island of Jamaica myself. And I remember going and visiting uh, a lady down the gully from me. And she and we, we were there with no power. And I thought, mm-hmm. And I remember having to go out to the, to, the, to the bathroom up on the hill. And it was the nighttime. And I remember the lizard started running. And I started running too. And I ran back to the bed and said, I'll get there in the morning. But there was a hole that was there. Anyhow, y'all understand me if you're from a third world country, so they call it, you'll know that squatting is one of the best ways to go because it aligns well. But when that doesn't happen, pay close attention. When that doesn't happen and you're at that 90 degree angle and you're constipated on top of it, there is a, something called an ileocecal valve. And when you're pressing that valve that's supposed to put the, 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 the food from the small intestines into the large intestines goes the opposite direction. I want you to hear that. So instead of the food going into the large intestines, the fecal matter comes back into the small intestines and the bacteria from that. And then it begins to travel up. And the more they eat, the further they go towards the stomach, the more bloating, the more inflammation, the more gas you're going to get. Wow. And their poop creates trouble in the wall. Inflammation. Do you see how this can begin to be a problem? Okay. I haven't even gotten to the rest of this yet. Wow. And we're at 318. All right. So you want to eat organic food wherever possible. Yes, there's still glyphosate on some of it because believe it or not, they're, spray, they're spraying so much that it's just getting all over, but it's going to be a little less than it will be on those foods that are uh, uh, directly sprayed, okay? So you want to be careful, especially with thin, uh, thin um, skinned fruit like berries. Uh, if they are not organic, just, you know, leave them alone because they're not going to be your friend unless you know the farmer. Because sometimes they're okay, but, they, but to be certified, they cannot tell you that they are, um, uh, you know, uh, necessarily organic. But they might be clean if you, if you can research the company where you're buying your frozen berries from and all these different things. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, let me go on. There's so much to say about that, but we're going to keep moving. Okay. Now, let's look at um, the hormone factor. Uh, I don't think I have the right one. I want to talk first. Okay, so let's go on to the hormone factor here. So when you don't have enough of the nutrients, and I'm going to get into the solutions with the nutrients. So just so you know, with disease, one of two things is the problem, okay? Either, either deficiency or toxicity. Let me say it again. When it comes to disease, it's either deficiency of some sort or toxicity or both. Okay. All right. When your liver is overrun and cannot get the toxins out quickly enough as you're taking them in, whether you're breathing them, whether you're putting your foot on the floor that has linoleum, which we won't even, I don't even have time to get into all that, but your, your liver's like inundated, I, it needs help. The kidneys are going to start helping. Everybody's going to try. The skin is going to try and start helping. And um, uh, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, so, so the liver gets inundated. And when that happens, disease begins to, to come in because you're not getting your toxins out as fast as you're taking them in. And if you don't have enough nutrition, point blank, it's an issue. Let me give you an example. So let's say you get a cold. And you are, you have all your, your basically pretty much most of your, your, um, your nutrition, but you might be missing one trace mineral, okay? Your cold is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty bad, but it won't be fatal. Um, you might take a little longer to get over it, uh, where it should have taken a day or two of rest and, and overcoming, yeah. But if you're missing two trace minerals, it is very bad on you. You will suffer greatly and for a longer period of time. You're missing three or more. Did you know it can actually become fatal? This is how important your nutrition is. Let me explain. You have a double helix DNA. Your DNA, the inside, the proteins, the outside, the sugars, polysaccharides, 
But guess what it's held together by? Minerals. You don't have enough minerals, you can't even keep your DNA together. Okay? This is serious. So now that we are becoming depleted in our minerals, and I'll get back there as to how we can be stop being depleted, these things are serious. Now, for every cup of, I'm sorry, for a bowl of spinach, anyone who knows me, I like to give this to you, and then we'll get onto the hormone, uh, what, what, what we have to do for hormones. But if you, in 1938, if you had a, a bowl of spinach, how many bowls do you think, and you can answer this, how many bowls of spinach do you think you would need to number the same amount of uh, the bowls of spinach, I'm sorry, the amount of nutrition in a bowl of spinach from 1938, from 2021? How many bowls do you think you would need? Let me hear you. Does anyone have an answer? One, seven to nine. Sorry, seven to 10. Go ahead. Put 70 it in. what? Seven to 10, 14 I, bowls. 14 bowls. Okay, let's go in once, going twice. Anybody else? 20 bowls. Oh, I was just going to say Ooh, Going once, going twice. Anyone else? Five. Five. Someone said five. 70. Oh, seven zero. Oh, seven, zero. Seven zero bowls. Seven to, zero. To, to, from 1932 to 1938, you would need 70 bowls. Yes. Of spinach to get to the one bowl in 1932 to 1938, which, if I'm not mistaken, your government said was not enough to keep a man well back then. Okay, what am I trying to tell you? In 1945, and for those of us who know um, that the enemy is, does, is not pleased with mankind and he's trying to shut him down, the, in 1945, and I believe I could prove this uh, prophetically, but anyway, in 1945 to 1950, I believe the enemy redoubled his effort to, efforts to destroy the last generation. Everything came out in, in 1950. The TV, they, but they changed agriculture from thousands of years. They did something called NPK. They decided to put nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in, back into the ground. But that's it. Where's the rest of the minerals? We're made up of many, 50 something, 50 something, 102. And they're only putting three back? Uh, if I gave you, excuse me, sorry. Go ahead, I have to mute someone, go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're agreeing with me loudly. I understand, I understand. So, 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 so here you have, if, if I had a $20 bill and gave it to you and you gave me back one, would I feel enriched? I feel like you stole from me, amen? That's not how it's supposed to work. So here comes this, this fruit and vegetables that look so good, but how much is in it? Hardly anything. So you're looking at every generation getting a little weaker and the millennials are suffering. Listen, they're calling me in teens and twenties and now in the single digits. Do you hear me? Okay, all right. So do you need nutrition? I'll get to that. Yes, you do. And the nutrition is low. That's why we were told as a people Grow your garden. It's in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, was it? Uh, it says the king himself is served by the field. Therefore, what does it say? Before you build your house, grow your own garden. Why? Because you may go buy your Walmart food and any other food and say grace over it. But really, the, the Bible says in Holy Writ, you should, you should grow a garden and that will be real food. But that, that's a whole other story. All right. I don't have time to get into that. All right. So hopefully you got What's happening to our food? The, 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 the nutrition decline. So there's not enough raw materials to let alone make our, our, our uh, hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to show you a way you can do that, not in this time, but uh, maybe another time to make your, 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 your um, hydrochloric acid without your hydrochloric acid being at a two on the pH. You cannot turn your proteins into amino acids which cannot make your B vitamins, and that's how you think. And B12 is needed, B6, B9, huh? all of these are needed to think. Wow. Okay. All right. I get a little excited. Now, so let's go on to nutrition. Hopefully you got, I mean, uh, you see that not having enough nutrition, that's just the tip of the iceberg, okay? All right, now let's go on to hormones. You need hormones to help with your 
Oh, oh, I, you know what? I'm, I wanted to tell you some more things on that, but anyway, I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay, so <clears throat> for the hormones to help with the brain, uh, there are several hormones that are a blessing, of course. Uh, there is, excuse me, um, testosterone, uh, some types of um, estrogen, like um, I think it's estriol. Let me make sure I've got myself together here. Um, yeah, let's deal with that. Uh, uh, yes, um, testosterone, I would say progesterone, that's a precursor to some of these. Anyhow, I want to talk to you about the vitamin D, which acts more like a hormone, and folate. Uh, okay, now, now for this, I have to deal with, okay. Now, now, this is important. Remember, I was talking to you about the fact that nutrition is being lacking. Now, when you take a multivitamin and you think you're getting all these wonderful minerals and, and, and vitamins, you need to know something. All vitamins are not created equal. They are not created equally. There are five places that most places get their, 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 their sources, and it's not pleasant. Some of it is chalk. Some of it is, is oxidized material. Some of it is coral. If we were meant to go scrape coral, the body could understand it. If we were meant to go eat dirt, the body could understand it, yet I will tell you how dirt will help, but that's a whole other story. Um, sewage, you know, saints, we need to really check where these things are coming from. I don't have time to get into where some of these regular um, uh, uh, vitamins and minerals are coming from, but in the question and answer, please ask me where to get the types of um, vitamins and minerals that will actually be organic that the body understands. Okay, please don't let me forget to do that. But for now, I want to deal with a particular brain derived uh, neurotrophic factor. It's called BDNF. Um, and this is excellent because there's, if there's not enough of this BDNF, the brain makes, and, 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 the and brain makes amyloid. Did you catch that? If there is not enough, of B, uh, hello? If I do a little bit longer, uh, you will have more problems. Because what I see will go into the system, so I cannot do. Sorry, Dawn. Someone was unmuted again. <laughs> Are you there? Is she gone? Okay. I think she may be muted. Hold on, just a second. Hello. Uh, Hi, Dawn. Uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, you're about to sit on. We're yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I apologize. I, I, I forgot that I we were to end at at three nineteen my time, and so we are now at three thirty. Okay. We can end here, and I could do question and answers if you desire. So, uh, so, said, so, go ahead, Pastor. So, so, Doctor, so, said Dawn, just on this Pastor Daily, just, um, just. Take about 10 more minutes and wrap up, and then we'll take questions okay. until 7 o'clock. It's a long presentation that needs about three or four hours to do. I know, I know. I told, yes. Yeah, it, it, it does. But, but it's worth the time because, trust me, when you start changing, well, don't trust me, but, but it's, it's beautiful. So, okay, I'll try to, try to wrap up real quick. All right, quickly, so, um, the BDNF. So if you, if you could come back another time, you know, because I know you can't. Yes, I'd be glad to do it. That, that we could sure. arrange. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So the, um, I'll be so glad we'll to do that. With you. All right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Continue. So really quickly then. Yes. Thank you. Let me do. So this this BNF, BDNF, this brain derived neurotrophic factor, is increased through guess what? Exercise. Exercise. What? Yes. If there is not enough BDNF, guess what the brain makes? It makes amyloid. This is the thing they're trying to get rid of, right? Now, wow. Okay, let me, I'm gonna pass down through this. I wanna get to, I wanna get to some toxins really quickly that you may not know that is also giving you an issue. And then we will get into the solutions very quickly. All right. Heavy metals, I'm not gonna get into that, but that's one. 
I'm going to get into food later and, and to show you how to get rid of these particular toxins, but there's a, there's a toxin that I haven't gotten to that I need you to understand that most of us have, okay? And it's called Wi-Fi or microwave energy from our cell phones. Now, Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, a functional doctor in um, Orange County, California, she talked about the fact that if you had, if you have, she, she, she has all these scan images, um, different things of this nature, but anyway, she did an experiment. She had someone speak on a cell phone with their cell phone next to the air for one minute. I'm going to repeat that. She had someone speak on a cell phone with the cell phone next to the air for one minute. Then she looked to see what that would do. That inflammation was there after five minutes, one hour, and even after five hours after the patient left, the inflammation was still there. So I don't know how long that inflammation lasts. From one minute of putting that microwave energy against your ear. Okay. I'm going to give you another story, and I'm shocking you because most people don't realize that there is something called cell phone induced cancer. They are glioblastomas and rare heart cancers. I don't have time to even get into that. But let me explain this. When that thing is near to your brain, you better check to see if the blood-brain barrier is broken. Yes. And all kinds of things can begin to come into that blood-brain barrier. Hey, a, a lawyer, 43 years old, catch that, 43, handsome young man, Testifying before a legislative body. It's on YouTube. It's a, if you want to look at Geo Wellness, he is on that as well. 43 year old, and he's begging them, please tell what cell phones do to people. Please tell them. Now, the younger generation is going to be more susceptible because we, as older generation or mid, mid people or people who are Gen Xers to, Gen, to boomers, but not millennials. We at least had real food to begin with. I was born in Jamaica. We had real food, real mango, real, you know, amen, right? So, but a lot of these people are on the, didn't start well. All right. Well, listen to this. Listen to this. The, 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 the man is standing there and he says, yes, you need to tell these people. And he says, as I stand with you here, you will see three cuts on my body. The first one is that I always had my cell phone in my left hand. You will see a cut through my wrist here and my palm for the first cancer tumor they took out. Hmm. He said, and I would also put it against my left ear. And you will see the second cut behind my ear for the glioblastoma they took out. Right, not glio, the, the brain, the whatever tumor he, he had on the side there. Then he said, the last one, which I have now, was for an aorta near his aorta because he would keep his cell phone in front of his heart right on the left side in his breast uh, pocket, the pocket that's over the breast because he always wore a suit. And he began to explain, and others are corroborating it, that after 10 years on a cell phone at 30 minutes a day, which I was doing more than that, at 30 minutes a day, that automatically sets you up for the, for the fact that that, not fact, but that it can now be that you will develop that kind of, 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 of issue of glioblastoma or rare heart cancers. Listen, this thing is no joke and it causes inflammation in the brain. And we are putting this in front of our little children and all these little devices, these tablets, which have five times the antennas. Saints, listen to me. Cord your Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi will... Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to stop with that for now. All right. So now let's go back into, let's go into some solutions. Amen. Let's do this because I don't want you to leave without solutions. There are many solutions. It is beautiful. Amen. Okay. So, all right. God already thought about this. He, it did not catch him by surprise that man would be so greedy as to create inventions that would destroy. Okay. He, he, he knew this. He's not caught by surprise. Remember, I talked about disease. And there are two things that are normally uh, there, toxicity or deficiency. Guess what? As you give your body the raw tools, 
you can overcome. Like, look, there's, if you want to find out about some marvelous things that are happening, Dr. Wes Youngberg, Dr. Bredesen, Dr. Uh, Tom O'Brien, some of these different folks, but Dr. Wes Youngberg, he has been working with diet to help uh, uh, Alzheimer's dementia patients. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's at 90% success rate. Did you catch what I said? That is nine zero, not nine. Nine zero. Okay. All right. So what can we do? There's a lot you can do. Turn off your Wi-Fi at night if you're not using it so your body can heal. Don't put your phone next to your ear. You know, I have a, a phone that is on top of a stick, and I call the stick Stick Stickly. Now, Stick Stickly, is, and, I, and, and I have an old flip phone, and I, I, put, I put it on with a rubber band, and I have had people laugh till they cried. I've had people be disgusted with me. One man said, I don't ever want to see you with that again. One young lady was ashamed of me when I had gone to Loma Linda to go hiking with her and her, her very learned friends. And she said, don't know, hide, hide that. <laughs> I laughed out loud. I said, no, they have neither heaven nor hell to give me. I don't want to have this thing all the time in my hand. I'm, you know, and so I put it on a stick and I go walking and I talk. I've had people tell me that I should, I, should, I should patent it. I said, yes, it's called my mobile station. Anyhow, what am I saying? Um, you don't want to keep the fuel on the fire. You don't want to keep the blood-brain barrier open. Do not put that on your ear. If you have a Bluetooth, do not keep a battery next to your ear, next to your brain, the most sensitive part of your body, as far as your capacity to understand. Stop frying your food. We eat our fruit fried, dyed, and laid to the side, just like we do our hair. That the hair dye is not good either. I could go on and on. All right. So stop putting the fuel on the fire. All right. When it comes to sugar, sugar, that, that's the last one I want to get to. Refined sugar, according to the sugar blues, is indeed a poison. Okay. Now, wow. Sugar messes with the synaptic action, white sugar that is. You know, they say the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. You heard that before. Yes. Well, white sugar isn't good. One man said, if it's white, it ain't right. Now, why is that the case? It robs the B vitamins. It robs the B vitamins. It stops the white blood cells from being able to attack. Not only do you rob your ability to think, you rob your ability to fight. All right. How do you get toxins, the toxins out of your body? Sauna, far infrared sauna, wonderful. Cilantro, one of the highest in silica, helps to bind to toxic metals, get it out of your system. Uh, There's so many ways to begin to help. So we want to, three things you want to begin to do. Be filled with minerals, filled with oxygen, and filled with hydration water. And I can tell you this, listen. If you're drinking five glasses of water today and you weigh 200 pounds and more, it's not going to overcome disease. And did you know there's a way to drink water? I have so many things to tell you. I have to wrap it up here. Listen, there's a way to drink water and most people cannot hold water. By the way, uh, there is a fruit that you can take in that will help your cells to hold water a little better, and that is the apricot. The apricot. Okay. Now, you can get them dry fruit. Anyway, most of us cannot hold our water in our cells anymore. That's very sad. There's a way to drink water that will help you. When you drink your water, okay, and if anyone wants the, um, the, the protocol for water drinking, just take, in fact, if you want, I can give you my email. That way I can send this to you um, uh, yeah. via digital uh, file. Email and I'll put it in the chat. Okay. All right. Give it to you and you'll put it in the chat. Okay. So, so okay. All right. So, so. She got muted. Uh, okay. You're okay. back. I'll, I'll end there. I'll end there for question and answers. Just know that there's hope for us in Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen.
Yes, Courtney, lead out in the end, question and answer. Courtney, I don't Lee. So if you have a question, let's put, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're able to raise your hand uh, for us. And before, before we take your answer, put it in the chat and raise your hand so we will uh, click on that, uh, whoever raises their hand. You mentioned to remind you that uh, how to clean the mouth. You have said that, we must remind you. Yes, oh, fantastic question. Yes, yes. And dear Heavenly Father, as we close one session and open another, we ask for wisdom for that is, you're the one that is the giver of wisdom for those who will have their questions. I pray that you will give them an answer of peace. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Yes. Amen. So when you're having trouble with abscess in the mouth, you're having gingivitis, periodontal diseases, uh, these are things you can do. The first thing, you can do something called coconut, uh, oil pulling. Now, oil pulling is second or third best, okay? There's a whole protocol that you can follow after you've eaten your meal that will help okay, to bless the, the teeth, all right? But one of the things that I find that's even better than oil pulling, and I'll explain oil pulling. Oil pulling is this. You will take uh, one of three oils that I know of that are, are good, which would be sesame oil or olive oil or coconut oil. What you do first thing in the morning or in the evening at night, uh, you would get you a, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon or whatever you can, a tablespoon's a lot, but you know, because with the you know, and you put that in the mouth and you swish it for 10, 15 minutes. All right. You swish that around. It tends to pull, tighten the gums and pull a lot of the um, uh, uh, toxins from the system out. You will spit that out at the end. All right. Um, some do it for 30 minutes. If you use coconut oil, this, another side effect is uh, the whitening of the teeth. Um, many have said, wow, it, it's really helped. Now, that is a helper. But another one that I find that is exceptionally quick is um, either wheatgrass or what I, my favorite is barley grass juice powder. Now this thing is fantastic. What you do, you take the, the, the barley grass or the wheatgrass and you can just get the powder. And I tell you the one I like is from Terrasol, T-E-R-R-A, Terrasol, S-O-U-L, Terrasol.com. You can buy a whole pound for $29.99. I don't want to get too much from me. I'm still at in, in Sabbath over here. So I'm not going to get too much into business, but you can get it there for a very good price. And it's a whole pound of it. You try to get a whole pound other places and you're going to pay a lot. It's about $29. Okay. So anyhow, you take that, you know, put it in a drink, drink, drink most of it, but leave a little bit in your mouth, swish that around your mouth, 10, 15 minutes and spit it out. If you want to spit it out. The greens do something to the body. Let me tell you how powerful it is. When your mouth pH is off, your mouth, the nutrition that should have gone in through the pores of the teeth to strengthen the teeth. Most people didn't know. I didn't know this till about five years ago. Your teeth actually take in nutrients. But when the pH is off and your mouth is not where it should be in its acidity uh, or in the pH level, which I think is about 6.8, what happens is your, that, that pH changes, and instead of the toxins, I mean, sorry, the, the minerals going into your teeth, the, the minerals come out of the teeth and toxins go in through the teeth. Now, I was astounded at that understanding. I said, whoa, wow. Well, guess what? Greens almost immediately, almost immediately changes the pH to normal. What does that do? the right amount of the, the, the salivary um, ba bacteria uh, that should be there are there, and healing begins to happen. Tightening of the gums, abscesses go away. It's fantastic. I had a man, he came to one of my health lectures, right? It was a series. We did a lecture of 10 for the, I, I do 10 laws of health, but there are eight majors. So he came for each one. When he came in, this man, had a blood, we were taking blood pressures. This man had a, <clears throat> a blood pressure of 205 over like a hundred and something stroke level. And he was on five medications. Well, guess what we did? We gave him some cayenne pepper, thing went right down. He came in and, and enjoyed the, the, the message. That man had a puffer, couldn't walk too far without a puffer. That man was, was baptized later, but what happened was 
he began to eat his greens. As he learned about greens, in order to have health, you have to have about a pound of greens uh, a day. This is part of the healing for um, the al Alzheimer's. Now, a pound of greens is quite a bit of greens to get in. I'll show you how you can do that. But what he started doing is those greens began to heal his mouth. So he went to his doctor and he had receding gums. The doctor just threw down his thing and he said, man, your plants have done for you in three months what my two months, what I haven't been able to do for you in three years. Mm. That's what the man said. He says, there is no distance between your gum and your teeth now. What are you doing? <laughs> and he started telling him. And every week this man would give a new thing and he was baptized, didn't even have to use a puffer for the baptism going up all those stairs. What a blessing. Is there hope for us in Christ? Yes. And is there a way to help heal our gums? Yes. That's my favorite way to do it. The second way, okay, the third way, sorry, is to every so often you can uh, do um, what they call a charcoal, use a little charcoal, what you would do, take a little charcoal, put it in some water, uh, take uh, a little bit of that in the mouth and take a walk, 10, I'm sorry, uh, 15 to 30 minutes and swish that around the mouth with abscesses. That's very great. Uh, and, and over time, it will help to keep the, the mouth uh, in decent order. I don't like to do that every day because with, with um, charcoal, charcoal is a powerful puller. It will pull a lot. So I don't like to overdo it. But you can do that, say, two, three times a week if you're starting to have trouble with your gums and begin to heal that out. Okay, but my favorite is that now there's a whole protocol for keeping your gums and teeth well. Salt is one of those things. If you can do nothing else after you finish eating, after you've had all your acidic food, <clears throat> what you can do after you've brushed your teeth, if you choose to brush your teeth after a meal, after you've brushed your teeth, just keep by your toothbrush a, 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 a um, uh, what is this thing called? A, just a glass of water or a little a bottle with water and salt, simple salt, Celtic salt, Himalayan salt, good salt, not the, not the table salt, which has 30% uh, sugar in it. I'm talking about real salt that has its minerals in it. Just keep a little of that already watered down and just take a little swish of that and then spit it out. That also keeps the pH well, okay? And so these are things you can begin to do to heal the, the gum, okay? Hopefully that's helpful and that will help with the inflammation that goes to the brain. All right, thank you, uh, Sister Dawn. No, um, mm -hmm. I know you mentioned, someone asked about how oh, you drink your water and you mentioned there's a protocol. Yeah. So more than likely you would have to send um, protocol when you give us your email. Now, I'm going to take a question from Galaxy J6. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Galaxy J6. Yes, um, she was telling us to ask about where we could get the good vitamins, the organic ones. So Excellent. All that information Excellent. thank you. Thank you. Yes. So <clears throat> uh, a, a good place to get or to, to when you're reading your labels, you want to make sure that you're getting the type of vitamins that are in the form that's absorbable. Like I didn't get a chance to get to this now, and I guess we'll have to come back together another time. But to explain how a woman was trying to bring down her inflammation uh, uh, and, and she was doing well, but she only got it to an 11 and the doctor said, we can't get it any further. And so they, they looked to see what vitamin B12 she was taking and she was taking a type of cyanocobalamin. Now cyanocobalamin will do some work, but because it's not complete in where it's at, it, 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 you need another step to make it completely usable in the, in the body. Uh, she couldn't get her, her inflammation down. Well, guess what? She decided they could put her on methylcobalamin, all right, and there's a hydroxy, I think, cobalamin, but methylcobalamin, and she went right down to a seven. So it makes a difference what the nutrients are, as in vitamin C being ascorbic acid, which is made many times from cornstarch and acid. What? And if the cornstarch is GMO, what? So you want to know where these things are coming from. So I find that a company that has been excellent is WISE, W-I-S-E. I, that seems to be pretty good. Um, I personally like raw whole foods. Um, I don't take a multivitamin, but, but for those who prefer to, I believe in eating. But if you're going to take a multivitamin, uh, you, you can go to like the vitamin code. Hopefully they haven't sold out so terribly as for them to change, but they started out an excellent company where it's your, 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 your um, vitamins and minerals are actually from fruits and vegetables. Like that's where it's from. 
And uh, that's the kind you want to get. Um, so I like the vitamin coat. I had a friend who was struggling with, uh, I think, vitiligo, and I told her about that particular issue, and she did not turn white. Right? She stayed nice and, and, and deep chocolate brown. Very lovely. So I have another friend who has changed her diet, and her vitiligo is going away as well. So it's, it's beautiful to see. So it makes a difference. Uh, by the way, I had a, a lady who had, um, uh, what do you call this, hepatitis H, is it? Hepatitis G or H, one of them. I didn't even know there was, there was such a thing. Well, hepatitis, it was caused because she had a gastric bypass. And so she had such a small stomach, she wasn't getting in enough nutrition. We gave her, those were the only uh, vitamins she was able to use. And she is doing so well today. She looks, she looks so much better. So, so you want to get them. So vitamin code wise, um, uh, there's also, what's the other one? Um, I think I hear someone. I can't make out what they're saying, but no, they're, anyway, they're so, those, those are some that I would like. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, those are the main ones that I would like. Personally, I prefer real food. So spirulina, um, broken cell, cell chlorella. I like things like seaweed, uh, Irish moss. We should know about uh, the vital itol. Is that what it is? Anyway, uh, all of these different things are have phosphates that the body can use. Um, and, uh, and nutrition that the body can understand and use. So I'm not one, when you find out that you take too much tryptophan of one, it will block other things. So they're finding out that having high amounts of one is not always the best. The only thing I think that, uh, that is excellent to take high amounts is in vitamin C. And I prefer vitamin C as in acerola cherry, amla berry, kamu kamu, all of these real foods. I find that people do better with that. Um, but you, you know, ascorbic acid doesn't work but I would prefer citric and that even citric has some of these corn derived issues. Just make sure they're non-GMO if you have corn derived uh, starch based uh, vitamin C. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Um, we have Sister Norma, I'm gonna mute you. Uh, now, just a minute, Donna Lee, you have something to say? Uh, I know your, your son is um, low. I don't know what's going on with your son, Donna Lee. Until you fix it on, let's go to um, Norma's S10. Um, I'm unmuting you, Norma. Go ahead, Norma. Uh, good, good night, good evening. Good night. Thank you so much for such a beautiful presentation. My question to you Thank is, you. you talk about the, um, the rice, the quinoa, and those stuff to... Uh, if you have a problem with wheat, um, would uh -huh. you advise someone who are in the process or reverse type 2 diabetes to continue to partake of even if it's brown rice or quinoa? Okay, excellent question. So with dealing with diabetes, there's three ways to get it. I won't go into that. It's more than three uh, ways. But what I would do is this. Um, what I would do is consider uh, the chromium factor when it comes to diabetes. Um, uh, I think that you need some grain in order to get um, some of that chromium because one of the ways to get uh, diabetes is that um, there's not enough chromium in the diet. And so chromium is what helps to move the insulin into the cells. So you might want to consider um, that. And that's in brown rice. It's in the, uh, I think it's the exosperm. It's right below the skin. Um, and when they have white rice, you don't have it anymore. So yeah, the rice, the, the outer portion of the rice will have a lot of these things in there. Not a problem. What I would say though is this, I have a paper, an article that describes how this new wheat can cause diabetes by itself. Now I was shocked at that. I said, wow, wheat can cause diabetes. Give your body a break from regular wheat for 21 days. Wheat, corn, and soy, just give the body a break. And yes, take the other kinds, quinoa, um, all these others. Here's something that I found very excellent for diabetes. And I cannot give advice because I am not a doctor. But what I can say is these are things to consider. Now, um, if you have diabetes, we had a woman who was 600 blood sugar. She had legions all over her body, type one diabetic. Okay, no insulin being produced, supposedly. 
And she came with 600 blood sugars. She couldn't, she was itching. I mean, just, it was a mess. So we figured out, Lord helped us to figure out what in the world can we do for her lesions. We found out what to do. Then as she was able to rest that night, uh, her blood sugar went down to about 120. Um, um, by the time she left, I think it was like, uh, I think that was, and this was, she refused to take any insulin. Now I don't take people off their medication. I believe working with the doctor, you can, you know, they can get off and they'll see. But anyway, she refused to take any. So that was why she was in the issue. And she was in her 50s, which is a long time to, to live with, with that kind of diabetes. Anyway, what we did for her, what we found out that worked really beautifully was to make a little powder, like a mixture. And what we did, all we did was we put some, some um, almonds. We put it in the blender or the coffee grinder. And we blended it dry. And over her cereal, over her rice, she just shook a little of that mixture mm. over that well it's really just almond almonds over that and with the protein mixed in with it we didn't see the spikes because she was a brittle now you won't even have to do that if it's type two um you know it's it's you won't even have to go that far but that is something to begin to help it will it will the protein will slow the sugar absorption it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing and so, so with a type one mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry no go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead i'm finished basically mm -hmm. So you're saying the raw, the raw almond nuts, like just put it in the coffee yeah. blender, and like just yeah. put it like just put it in the blender or the coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and put mm -hmm. it over your cereal or over the rice or whatever. Exactly. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank, mm -hmm. you. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you're God very bless. welcome. Hopefully that answers. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Praise God bless you. you. You're welcome. You uh, Donna, are you ready? Uh, are your system is ready? Uh, we Courtney, have a baby online. Courtney, you see, even Courtney, babies we have online here. Courtney, she Just said there were she said there were three things for the diabetes. She mentioned chromium factor. What were the other two, ma'am? She's muted. Um, she went down. To check the check the bottom of the screen. Um, I said to unmute. Oh, she's unmuted. Okay, sorry. Hello? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, you're, you're back. Yeah. You said there were okay, three, okay. Um, three things for the diabetes. You mentioned the chromium factor. What's the other two? Sure. So now normally this takes another lecture in and of itself, but just quickly, <laughs> um, what, it, what it does, oh, yeah, I do give lectures on, on, on diseases. So, you know, it's hard for me to put all, all things in one little spec, as you can see, but, but um, this way um, there's another... So one is, um, uh, um, okay, so I dealt with the chromium. Uh, the other is fat. So they gave, it's not so much the sugar, it's the fat that clogs the, um, the um, insulin receptors from being able to get the sugar from the blood into the, um, into the cell. So fat is the next one. All right, that's the major one. So when we fry in our food and all of this stuff, uh, that tends to be part of the issue. Okay. The next one, and I, I, I mean, I want to, I want to touch this one because this is going to sound crazy, but plastics, <clears throat> and I didn't even get into this yet with, with the Alzheimer's, but plastics are bad. And the softer the plastic, the worse it is. Um, what they have found is that the plastic, especially like the plastics that, you know, you, you go to the store and you're putting these little thin plastic bags, the thinner the plastic. Okay, so what happens is the plastic have, have, has these chemicals in it. They act like estrogen in the body, all right? Um, they're not estrogen, they're false or fake or, or foreign, but they act like it. And they go into the cell, they are 400,000 times stronger than any plant estrogen, okay? So they can give soy all the bad name they want, but plastic, if you're holding on to drinking out of plastic water bottles, drinking uh, uh, all, all these types of things, plastic, what plastic does, it is so insidious, it's awful. It goes into the system as soon as you touch it. So if you have hot food and you put it into a Tupperware, beware, beware. If you have drinking juice, uh, 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 acidic juice out of a plastic bottle, beware, okay? All right. So they brought the, uh, 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 where was I at? They, um, the plastic goes in, 
and it can attach itself and does attach itself to your regular eukaryotic cells, your protein. And that creates a new looking thing to the body. And the white blood cell says, what is that? Mercy. Huh? Mercy. And it begins to act. Exactly. Have mercy. Is right. Listen, these messages, I'm telling you, I don't know. I could scream because what God is calling us to is a life of simplicity. This convenience is killing us. God is calling us back to what we had about a hundred years ago. Simple, real material, simple glass, clay, you know, stainless steel. Anyway, I don't have time, but these are things that are causing a problem. Okay. Now, uh, they're saying that we're actually pooping or excreting uh, uh, plastic. Huh, I didn't even get to the point of plastic, the nanoplastics that are in fish. So we like to eat a lot of fish. Jesus ate fish, I'm eating my fish. No problem, you go on. But know this, on top of the DDT and the DDE and the mercury, which is in the fat that we love to fry and eat. I know I used to love it. But what they're finding is nanoplastic. The fish eat the, you know, the plastic, they, they're taking it in, it's in their flesh and we're eating that. And because of this now, we're eating about a credit card. I don't know if it's per week. No, a credit card. I can't remember. I don't know how for, for each with the time spaces, a credit card amount of plastic. For the first time in New York, three years ago, four years ago, I was in New York giving lectures and we came across our first plastic-induced cancer. Yeah. Anyway, it's serious. So I tell people, get rid of the plastic. You can't get rid of all of it, but lessen it. Think about, you're sitting in your car. You're driving this plastic, this, this plastic car. On, your hand's on the wheel all the time. It's hot. What do you think is happening? Do better with a leather car. Anyhow, like I said, I'm a little exhaustive in the way I deal with this, but, but you can turn this around you can go in a sauna and begin to sweat. The Bible says, by the sweat of your brow, you should eat bread, but most of us eat without any sweat. And guess what? We spread with the toxins. The body puts fat over those toxins to stop you from dying. You gain weight. You may not be eating a lot, but you could be full of toxins. You could be full of inflammation. You stop putting that stuff in or at least mitigate it, lessen it. And guess what begins to happen? It's amazing. So Amen. something to think about. Amen. All right, we don't have a lot. Uh, we have two hands up. These are the only two that we'll be taking. Uh, we have Sister Veronica. I'm going to unmute you. Sister Donna, your phone is, your computer working? Oh, well, what's going on with this mic? Uh, go ahead, Sister Veronica. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. yes I can. Um, you spoke about an easy way to get a pound of vegetables in. Um, I yes. just want to know, what was an easy way to do that? Praise God. You know what? You have asked a fantastic question. Thank you. Because that, that is going to help with so many things. All right. So this is how I try to explain it. So you know, you know what a pound looks like. It's, it's, it's the one you buy in the, in the plastic thing. You, you know, it's kind of, just, it'll say 16 ounces, a little smaller than the real big one. All right. So that's a lot. That's a lot of green. But guess what? If you blend it into a raw soup, Say you blend it, the spinach and the different things, you blend that and you season it like you would season soup, you can get a pound of greens in that way. Or you can take two smoothies a day and a nice salad. You will get a pound in. And that's the least you need to get to have health today. You really need more, but because, you know, you, you'd be eating from here till the cows come home, right? So, but if you blend your salad or blend your soup, blend your raw food in that way and then season it, you can actually do that or make a dip out of it. I've told people, you take some nuts, a few little nuts, put some lemon. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things to make like a nice dip and it kind of looks green. But when you taste it because of the nuts and the olives you might put in there to give it a nice savory flavor, you can dip your stuff in that and enjoy it. And you're getting a pound of greens. You just need to know how to blend it, to put, to bring it down. Because you know, when you cook it, it becomes nothing, right? You, you cook right. it down. And the kale that looks so big becomes nothing. Well, when you blend it, it's the same, but you're getting it in raw. Now, you don't need it all raw because kale will take care of your cholesterol if you do it steamed or cooked. 
And then if you eat it raw, it will go into your cells. It will beat up the toxin, take it out on its back and take it out of you. So you want both ways, right? So it, it just depends. But if you can start to get more greens in my mind, not with a bunch of fat. If you want to make greens, instead of making the collard greens with ham hocks and a bunch mm -hmm. of oil, this is what you do. You take coconut milk, put a little peanut butter or almond butter in that, mix that in with some yeast flakes, some, some brags or something, some smoked paprika, some ginger or whatever makes you, you happy. You put that in your mouth, you're going to be like, what? I love Sister Dawn. Yeah? So <laughs> it, it will taste good, but... It does. Right. But it will be like medicine to your soul. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that Amen. coconut milk goes a long way. By the way, coconut milk is very good at the medium. We'd even get to this, the medium chain fat that heal the brain from Alzheimer's. I've been so using it. what I'm it. telling you, you is food that will bless you. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you. God is good. God is good. All right. So we have one more question here from Dr. Ephraim. You can unmute yourself, okay. Dr. <laughs> oh, Sister Dawn, I, I have a quick question. Um, you know yes, about please. the scalar energy cards. What are your take on those in terms of protecting against the electromagnetic field? Like those cards you. that you can use if you're charging your phone, let me tell you. I have a few of them. When I'm charging my phone, my tablet, anything, I always place it at the back of it. I leave them in a separate room. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can test if it works. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. If it blocks the signal, it will work. So mm -hmm. if you, say for instance, what, if you have a car, you don't have to tell me what kind of car you have, but if you have a car and you, you have one of those uh, entries from afar, right? And you go close to it and you put that against the, the, the thing. And if it doesn't open, it's doing good. That's a good one. All right. Now I asked, so Geo Wellness deals with this. And I went to go to their, um, you know, their little things where they show you. And I asked the scientists myself, I said, listen, I want to know how is it that you can put these kinds of things in this card? They, they call, there's a name for it. I can't remember what it's called, where it's, uh, they call, it's what they called. It's not charged, but it's, uh, they, 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 I can't think of the name they called it, but, but it's supposed to go into this, uh, the properties go into this thing and it, and it harmonizes somehow the, the Wi-Fi signal, all right, or blocks it altogether. And I asked them, I said, oh, train, Tra and train, and train, I think it was called. Thank you, dear Lord. I think it was something like that. Anyway, it's been like 10 years since I've been to one. And they could not give me a satisfactory answer. The same with Kangen water and, 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 yeah, you know, I ask questions. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. If you want to know what water to drink, we should do a water lecture. That one's fun. But anyway, but, but I, I, I asked them and they could not give me, and they kept, you know, sending me to other uh, scientists and they still could not give me a very good one, but there are some, let me tell you, there are some, um, um, like there's one for your bed. If you go to, um, say a hotel, or if you go to, uh, or in your home and you have Wi-Fi or you have to be somewhere where there's Wi-Fi, there's something called a sleep sanctuary. That one's supposed to be pretty good. Um, as far as the um, EMF guards, there are a few that I have seen. I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I've done that lecture. See if I can remember. Um, I don't know if I can remember an actual name, but it actually, it, it's a sleeve you can put on you because once you open it, if it's facing you, unless, unless it's causing the EMF to go outward, um, it's still going to come towards you, right? So, or around. So you want to make sure that it's actually blocking the signal proper until you're using it. Now, it may mitigate it. I don't know if it can actually get rid of all of it, but they, these ones, these sleeves actually do get rid of it because you cannot even get your text till you get it out of there and it, then it will, it will register. So, um, so that and those are like twenty to eighty dollars um, online, uh, but they'll tell you you can't get your signal till till it's till it's uh, the, uh, the till you've taken it out of the sleeve uh, proper. So uh, there's a place to go called uh, where is this one called? There's Geo Wellness. I don't know how well those work because those are the ones that I asked that I could not get a satisfactory answer from. Where they use pen pet pet pet, pet 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 what's that called? Where it goes around your um, neck. Pen, not pendulum. Oh, it's, it's like oh, a no. witch's. I don't believe yeah, in those so, either. 
But what about yeah, the one exactly, that they use right? in so space? I'm like, I don't know about that one. Yeah. So but what about the anyway, one that they, they use have in those space? They have those cards. Yeah. That uh, line. So I have you could had line a... your whole roof and it reflects out. Okay. Well, if 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 it can be reflecting out, you'll know whether or not you can close your your door with it or not, or if you have some kind of device, if it blocks you from doing it and it's going the opposite way, you'll know it's real, okay? Um, I would test it because there are those who start well and then it doesn't, it's not able to do it after a few uh, days. I've looked at some of these, like the one that you can sleep on when you go to, you know, or put your feet on and it will start out the first week being able to do it and you test it again and it doesn't do it. So you have to be careful. Now there is something you can do though, and it's gonna sound crazy once again, leather, leather shoes, Instead of rubber soles and, um, and fake uh, shoes, leather is an, an, an earther. It will help to ground you from that or go out in the grass uh, wherever you're at every so often during the day. And I'm not a new age person. I don't believe in that. But those pores, when you uh, are allowed to get that, that Wi-Fi from um, destroying you, and that Wi-Fi is very serious, you all. It oscillates the, the um, DNA uh, and the water and the DNA and the nucleus of your cells at 2.4 billion times per second. It is no joke. And 5G is going to decimate. It's going to decimate. I don't even want to get into that just now because that's a whole lecture in and of itself. But what I would do is test it. And I would certainly um, consider um, something like a sleep sanctuary at night. That is a real healer uh, when you're allowed to sleep at night you can heal from the, on, the onslaught of Wi-Fi in, in someone's home. But the, the cards, I, I don't have very much confidence in them at this point. Sister Dawn. Hello. Donna, Donna is trying to call you Sister Dawn. Donna is low. Um... Yes, yes, I'm here. I can hear everybody else, but her, she does sound low. Uh a bit about the role of aluminum in Alzheimer's? Yes, that I wow, didn't even get there. Um, so like I said, this is wow, this is a long, a lot, a lot of amount. And I have an aluminum, um, unfortunate, I have an aluminum, um, my Mac, Macs are aluminum. I found that out. I said, great. Anyway, so if I forget, you'll know what happened. Um, so aluminum is wicked, it's in. Some of the vaccines, I'm just going to say that and leave that. Um, it's in um, uh, the metalloestrogens in the pans that we're using. Uh, unfortunately, some of that is in the air that we're breathing. Uh, a lot of it, actually. Uh, they're registering it on the tops of the sea. They're registering it on the tops of the, in the ground, on the ground. It's changing the pH of the ground, uh, barium, strontium, and aluminum are in, the, uh, are in the air, unfortunately, to a very large degree. That can create a plaque in the system, in the lungs, as well as in other places. This is a whole other story, which is why sauna uh, is going to be one of the great ways to help. Also, there's um, a enzyme called, is it an enzyme? Wait, hold on, no, amino acid, um, glycine. Glycine, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I normally give a lecture on that as well, uh, is good at binding to this and taking these things out as well as the glyphosate. So, I mean, that's, that's a whole other lecture in and of itself, but these, these are things that you can consider doing. What was that, sis? I, I didn't catch that, I'm sorry. Was someone asking a question? Okay, I, I don't hear anyone, but um, yeah, so uh, these are things that um, you can do. Cilantro, very high in silica, will bind. Uh, also, broken cell chlorella, um, mercury, and that's very good with mercury. Horsetail, also a very good uh, uh, mineral to take in. So these are ways to help bind the aluminum. Do not use aluminum things to cook in, to bake in. Sometimes our, our, our potlucks, if you want to call them that, the pot may have bad luck if you want to call it that, but uh, it should be fellowship dinner where we can enjoy one another and the health. But um, the aluminum pans that we use sometimes with that hot food, uh, that is not going to be pleasant. And yes, that they do find that in the brain. Uh, that can be probably one of the primary causes. Hopefully that answers that. 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, it's getting a little dark at my church. I think I want to start uh, getting out of here. I think I'm locked in here. <laughs> All right, Courtney. All right. All right. Wow. wow. Danani, that was a real good presentation. You brought a very Can I ask a question? Much. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank we have you. to close now. I'm can sorry. I get can I get contact information, please? Okay. Yes, Donna Lee, please give us your contact information, Donna Lee, email or whatever. I'll give and it to her and she can she can give it out. Right, okay. And Courtney, okay, somebody yeah. want to see this program. Where do they see it? What what Facebook site they could go and look at that, Courtney? Courtney? Yes, Pastor. We you can go to. Uh, Facebook, Han Ministry, H O N dot Ministry. Yes, and I was on Healing of the Nations Ministry too, and I saw it there a while ago on Facebook while I was there. Amen. Okay. I like your name, Healing of the Nations. That is lovely. Okay, well, thank, thank you. But it was nice having you. And I, I know it was we a will, blessing uh, to be here, Elder. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it was great. Lord bless you with wonderful Praise knowledge. Yeah, he is faithful. He's so smart. He he makes you <laughs> he makes you think you you look smart, but you certainly aren't. He's the one who knows how to drop that wonderful information in your lap. He's lovely. Right, yeah. and I know and I know through Donna we're going to contact you again and um you know see how okay. uh, we can work together as much as we can uh, to bring this valuable information yeah. to um God's people. Amen. Amen. So, folks, um, this is the, uh, the, the Extending Your Life Naturally, uh, which is a program from the Healing the Nation. We're here 5 o'clock every Sabbath afternoon. We try, by God's grace, to bring you um, cutting-edge natural health information that will extend your life. And the team of us, we're happy to have you on this evening. Next week at 5 o'clock, God's willing, We'll be having our um, mentor, the one who trained us from 2008, Brother James Luke. And he'll be talking about leaky gut. Um, you remember that um, Sadon mentioned it a little bit earlier on. So I want you to save next week, five o'clock. This Wednesday night, remember we have our Wednesday night services, uh, our health healing restoration service and um, prayer and the testimonies, health nuggets and our new director of the Northeastern Conference, um, Dr. Diana Ryan will be our guest presenter uh, this uh, Wednesday evening, the 1st of um, December. So make sure you're on. And on Sabbath morning, we have a special guest. You guys probably never know she's a powerful preacher. That's our former first lady, Sister Eunice Baker. She'll be here at 10 o'clock. Uh, to present the message. She has a powerful, she's a long time medical missionary, Courtney, you may not know, guys, no. but you know, um, she's a Bush doctor, if you want to call her. Mercy. <laughs> she's very, very, very supportive of this message. So there's a whole lot of stuff that's lined up for you, but uh, is it good for us to keep it to ourselves, uh, Courtney and Natalie? No, no, no. You know, when we give, the person we give it to, not just get a blessing, but, the, but you yourself get a blessing, even if you don't want a blessing. And I'm sure Sister Dawn has been blessed left, right, center, overhead, to the side, to the back. She has been blessed. And so she gives, gives away that and she gets back a blessing. Right, Sister Dawn? You're muted, Sister Dawn. <laughs> Maybe she, it was night where she is. Right. right at the so bottom. Folks, I think she left. So folks, remember, um, the Bible says that every good gift, gift comes from above. Uh, and this evening we receive a very good gift. And uh, this came because God wishes above everything that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. But remember, it's not the hearers that will be justified, but the doers. Uh, what are you taking away from this this evening? Think about that. That will help you to prevent this dreaded um, disease. Alzheimer's, and uh, she couldn't finish it, but uh, we got some valuable information. At least jot one thing down that you're taking away 
uh, that you could work on so that um, you can prevent that or, 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 or improve what's going on if you have it? And I know there are some of us who have um, people with these uh, Alzheimer's in our home or other dementia. It's very, very challenging for many of us who are healthcare, uh, who, are, who are giving care. It's a very difficult thing. And we want to pray for you tonight that God will um, give you the strength to do so, right? Uh, if you're here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, remember he promised to give you his own mind. He promised to give you the mind of Christ. That's very important because the devil wants to mess up our minds. The Lord communicates through our delicate brain nerves. And when the devil messes it up, then it affects the communication that God um, wants to have with us. So we need to pray that God will give us the mind of Christ so that we can resist all the negative forces uh, that will cause mental decline and lead to some of these dreaded diseases. So this evening, at the end of this service, um, the team will, will, will meet you in our prayer room, our breakout room. If you have a few more questions, one, or uh, if you want to give your heart to the Lord, if you want to get some, some health Bible studies, we have that health Bible study that we mentioned, those eight uh, health Bible studies here that we mentioned, and you call 646-400-7520 to get them. Uh, God wants us to be healthy, but we have to cooperate with him, okay? And those of you who are struggling this evening, remember, we can do all things. Through Christ who threatens us. A lot of information came our way. And it's not easy to put everything together. But just take a piece of it. And go over this back on Facebook. And, um, and God will help you. So I'm going to pray with you this evening before we go. And again we thank you for coming on from near and far. Okay. So let us bow our heads to prayer. And you raise your hands. The tech will put you in the prayer room and we will have a little talk with you and then we'll assign some folks to continue working with you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for um, these wonderful, this wonderful information that can help to extend our lives naturally. I want to thank you for the team and especially Donna Lee who brought this wonderful sister here this evening to give us information. Uh, we thank you for everyone who is on, who came on. I pray that you will, you will help us to know that you want us to be healthy in body, mind, and spirit. Yes, in body, mind, and spirit, in our relationships, and in our finances, because indeed, you are a good God. And this weekend, as we're, as we're, as we're giving thanks, we want to remember you from whom all blessings flow. You are great. You're amazing. And you said that you inhabit the praises of your children. When the praises go up, then the blessings come down, Lord. When we praise you, then the power will come down to break down the walls of Jericho. Just like Joshua, when they, when, when, when they praise you, the almighty supernatural power came down, break down the walls of Jericho and set your people free. Uh, uh, I pray today that this will be your experience as we praise you, we'll sense your power so that the barriers in our life can be broken down and Jesus can fill us up to the overflowing. I uh, bless all the families here this evening represented. And as we go back to continue our weekend celebration, help us to always remember that you are in the midst of all of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And guys, if you want to give to the heal of the nations, I don't see the 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 um I don't see the Courtney assigned um, Carol Jones, 
Francois, Margaret, myself to the prayer room, and Sister Idalia, please. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful um, weekend. You heard me, Courtney, I accepted, but I got bumped out. <laughs> Good night, everyone.